Hi everyone, I just wanted to start you off by uh, reading a little bit of Just So Stories by, I believe it's Rudyard Kipling. Um, now, when you're reading on YouTube, you can't read copyrighted books. So, fortunately for us, we try to read a lot of older books that are in the public domain anyway. Um, naturally, uh, by the homeschooling that we do, we uh, we follow Ambleside online, and a lot of the books are just older books, so that's really great. Uh, so I'm going to read uh, from Just So Stories, and you can see the illustrations here are beautiful in color. The illustrations were in color by J.M. Gleason and Paul Bransom. All right, so we're just going to start with How the Whale Got His Throat. How the whale got his throat. In the sea, once upon a time, on my best beloved, oh my best beloved, there was a whale and he ate fishes. He ate the starfish and the garfish and the crab and the dab and the place and the dace and the skate and his mate and the mackerel and the pickerel and the really truly twirly whirly eel. All the fishes he could find in all the sea he ate with his mouth so, till at last there was only one small fish left in all the sea, and he was a small, stoot fish, and he swam a little behind the whale's right ear, so as to be out of harm's way. Then the whale stood up on his tail and said, I am hungry, and the small, stoot fish said in a small, stoot voice, Noble and generous cetacean. Have you ever tasted man? No, said the whale. What is it like? Nice, said the small stoot fish. Nice, but nubbly. Then fetch me some, said the whale, and he made the sea froth up with his tail. One at a time is enough, said the stoot fish. If you swim to latitude 50 north, longitude 40 west, that is magic, you will find sitting on a raft in the middle of the sea, with nothing on but a pair of blue canvas breeches, a pair of suspenders, you must not forget the suspenders, best beloved, and a jackknife, one shipwrecked mariner, who, it is only fair to tell you, is a man of infinite resource and sagacity. So the whale swam and swam to latitude 50 north, longitude 40 west, as fast as he could swim, and on a raft, in the middle of the sea, with nothing to wear except a pair of blue canvas breeches, a pair of suspenders, you must particularly remember the suspenders, best beloved, and a jackknife, he found one single solitary shipwrecked mariner, trailing his toes in the water. He had his mummy's leave to paddle, or else he would never have done it, because he was a man of infinite resource and sagacity. Then the whale opened his mouth back and back and back till it nearly touched his tail and he swallowed the shipwrecked mariner and the raft he was sitting on and his blue canvas breeches and the suspenders which you must not forget and the jackknife he swallowed them all down into his warm dark inside cupboards and then he smacked his lips so and turned round three times on his tail but as soon as the mariner, who was a man of infinite resource and sagacity, found himself truly inside the whale's warm, dark inside cupboards, he stumped and he jumped and he thumped and he bumped and he pranced and he danced and he banged and he clanged and he hit and he bit and he leaped and he creeped and he prowled and he howled and he hopped and he dropped. And he cried, and he sighed, and he crawled, and he bawled, and he stepped, and he leapt, and he danced hornpipes where he shouldn't. And the whale felt most unhappy indeed. Have you forgotten the suspenders? So he said to the stoot fish, This man is very nubbly, and besides, he is making me hiccup. What shall I do? Here's the picture. of the whale. Looks like opening his mouth, getting ready to swallow the man. And it says, this is the picture of the whale swallowing the mariner with his infinite resource and sagacity and the raft and the jackknife and his suspenders, which you must not forget. 
The buttony things are the mariner's suspenders, and you can see the knife close by them. So here's the knife. And the buttony things right there are his suspenders. He is sitting on the raft, but it has tilted up sideways, so you don't see much of it. The whitey thing by the mariner's left hand is a piece of wood that he was trying to row the raft with when the whale came along. The piece of wood is called the jaws of a gaff. The mariner left it outside when he went in. The whale's name was Smiler, and the mariner was called Mr. Henry Albert Bivens, A.B. The little stute fish is hiding under the whale's tummy, or else I would have drawn him. The reason that the sea looks so ooshy scooshy is because the whale is sucking it all into his mouth so as to suck in Mr. Henry Albert Bivens and the raft and the jackknife and the suspenders. You must never forget the suspenders. Tell him to come out, said the stute fish. So the whale called down his throat to the shipwrecked mariner. Come out and behave yourself. I've got the hiccups. Nay, nay, said the mariner, not so, but far otherwise. Take me to my na natal shore and the white cliffs of Albion, and I'll think about it. And he began to dance more than ever. You had better take him home, said the stute fish to the whale. I ought to have warned you that he is a man of infinite resource and sagacity. So the whale swam and swam with both flippers and his tail as hard as he could for the hiccups, and at last he saw the mariner's natal shore and the white cliffs of Albion. And he rushed halfway up the beach and opened his mouth wide and wide and wide and said, Change here for Winchester, Ashalot, Nashua, Keene, and stations on the Fitchburg Road. And just as he said Fitch, the mariner walked out of his mouth. But while the whale had been swimming, the mariner, who was indeed a person of infinite resource and sagacity, had taken his jackknife and cut up the raft into a little square, grating all running crisscross, and he had tied it firm with his suspenders. Now you know why you were not to forget the suspenders. And he dragged that grating good and tight into the whale's throat, and there it stuck. Then he recited the following sloka, which, as you have not heard it, I will now proceed to relate. By means of a grating, I have stopped your aiding. For the mariner, he was also an Hiber Hibernian, and he stepped out on the shingle and went home to his mother, who had given him leave to trail his toes in the water, and he married and lived happily ever after. So did the whale. But from that day on, the grating in his throat, which he could never cough up nor swallow down, prevented him eating anything except a very, very small fish. And that is the reason why whales nowadays never eat men or boys or little girls. The small stute fish went and hid himself in the mud under the door sills of the equator. He was afraid that the whale might be angry with him. The sailor took the jackknife home. He was wearing the blue canvas breeches when he walked out on the shingle. The suspenders were left behind, you see, to tie the grating with, and that is the end of that tale. And here is the final picture of the whale and the stute fish. When the cabin portholes are dark and green because of the seas outside, when the ship goes wop with a wiggle between and the steward falls into the soup tureen and the trunks begin to slide, when nursery lies on the floor in a heap and mummy tells you to let her sleep and you aren't waked or washed or dressed, why, then you will know if you haven't guessed your 50 north and 40 west. All right, and one picture that we missed. Here we have the whale looking for the little stute fish who was hiding under the door sills of the equator. The little stute fish's name was Pingle. He is hiding among the roots of the big seaweed that grows in front of the doors always kept shut. Oh, the doors of the equator. I have drawn the doors of the equator. They are shut. They are always kept shut because a door ought always to be kept shut. The ropey thing right across is the equator itself, and the things that look like rocks are the two giants, Moor and Kor, that keep the equator in order. They drew 
the shadow pictures on the doors of the equator, and they carved all those twisty fishes under the doors. The beaky fish are called beaked dolphins, and the other fish with the queer heads are called hammer-headed sharks. The whale never found the little stute fish till he got over his temper, and then they became good friends again. All right, thank you for listening.